Hi, my name is Tayo, and in this video, I'm going to tell you five things about the Sony a7 IV that make this camera just something. Let's do this, y'all. Welcome. Welcome. The Sony a7 IV is arguably the best camera on the market right now. The first thing for me, and I think a lot of people will relate to this, is the fact that this camera can act as a webcam. All you have to do is just plug and play. You don't have to use any other third party app or plugin or whatever. Before when I was using my Sony a6400, I had to install the Sony Imaging Webcam app, I believe that's what it's called, and that would automatically make my Sony a6400 a webcam. But with the Sony a7 IV, whatever app that you're doing it, all you have to do is just plug in the camera and this then automatically becomes a webcam. Now, the beauty of this camera, fun fact, is that as I was just about starting to record this video, the Sony a7 IV just overheated. It's about, what five degrees outside so i don't know why it's doing that but i'm having to change now into a dummy battery um but it doesn't usually do that it doesn't usually do that so i don't know what's wrong but i hope i don't know that's something to consider we got just a little bit of situation right there i can testify that it works like magic it's never failed me before all you have to do is just take the original usb 3.0 that comes with that and plug it in. Even if you use a different USB cable, it will still work, but you might be limited to 720p. Everybody is doing some sort of online meeting at this point. So you wanna look as good as you possibly can be. I'm a filmmaker. I wanna appear as a filmmaker on meetings. So I want there to be bokeh. I want everything to be all set up. The a7 IV does that amazingly well. The second thing that really impressed me about this camera, the first day I took it out the box, is the standard mode. This thing is beautiful in standard. I've always had a problem with Sony standard colors coming out of the a6400, the a7 II, the a7 III. It just didn't really seem right. But maybe that's because those were 8 bit cameras. I don't know. But the standard color out of this camera is just fantastic. As a matter of fact, when I first got this camera, I only filmed in standard for like the first one and a half month because I really just loved how it looks. There was no need to fumble and tangle. You do have to set your white balance. I would preferably say set a custom white balance for whatever scenario that you're filming in if you're filming in standard. And two, do not overexpose the highlights because they're gone. They are gone. But I still think like there's still some leeway in that, that you can sort of bring back something. So the image quality out of this thing is gorgeous. Whether you don't know how to color grade, whether you don't know how to do any post-production or whatever, and you just want to film straight out of camera, post it up to your socials, the Sony a7 IV is a great camera for that. In terms of image quality, if you're looking to take it up a notch, this is where the likes of S-Log3 and S-Cinetone comes in. Now, I personally use S-Log3 on everything. I mean, I don't know why not. If you take that and you combine that with the Phantom Lots, shout out to Joe Famolaro, the Phantom Lots for the Sony cameras, they just, you don't need anything else. I think that the 10-bit color on the Sony a7 IV is plenty enough for anybody. The dynamic range is, is up there with a lot of other cameras. Another thing that I really like in terms of image quality out of this camera is how clean this camera is in low light. Now, a lot of people say that the a7S III is the monster of low light. Now, I, yeah, I do agree, but I feel like the Sony a7 IV at those minimum ISO levels, that's pretty where a lot of people are gonna be using this. I personally jump between base of 800 and 3200. If it's night and it's too dark, I just go 3200 and put on an f1.4 lens. And trust me, it looks really good in everything. As a matter of fact, I've done a lot of things in terms of low light. I've done a lot of things in terms of low light on this camera. I've tested out this camera in several low light conditions and I've been impressed with how they come out. They're usually clean. And someone has even argued to say that the a7 IV has a cleaner ISO in lower values than the a7S III. I'll let you do with that what you want, but what's the one of the a7S III, 25,000, 28,000, whatever that is, you don't need that extreme low light ISO anyways. That's what I'm saying, unless you actually do need it which I don't know, then you need it. If you're not looking to color grade and you just want something with a quick turnaround, s Tone on the a7 IV is amazing. Now, I personally, I haven't filmed in s Tone yet. And that's just because S-Log 3 with my Phantom Lots are match made in heaven. 
Why would I need to change? I'm not a photographer, so I really don't take a lot of pictures. I actually don't like taking pictures, which is sort of weird for someone who is a creative. But the a7 IV is a gorgeous camera when it comes to picture. I don't have to tell you that. You've seen countless reviews on the internet about how good the pictures coming out of this thing is. If you want to see more of the Sony a7 IV contents, because I will have a lot of things coming out about this camera, make sure you subscribe and uh, yeah, that, that's it. That's all you just got to do. Make sure you, oh, right. And hit the bell icon so that when I post a new video, you will be notified. Number three, a lot of people talk about this, but I don't think people truly appreciate it. Only people who are coming from like the A6400 or actually any of the A A6000 series will truly understand just how well the form factor of this camera is. This thing has a very nice grip. You wouldn't have any problem with holding this. Now for someone like myself that I have medium sized hands, I think that Sony a7 IV is great for my hand size. If I had bigger hands, then it probably might be a problem. But I think for me, the grip is just fantastic. It holds well. It's sturdy. The feel just, it's good. It's good. Trust me. It is good. In terms of the design on the body, the switch on the top is something that I didn't know that I would appreciate so much. Being able to switch from video to photo, we just, bam, it's it's magic. It makes me feel like a, a gone man in the West, in the wild, wild West, not West, West, wild. I was gonna say West, West, wild, in the wild, wild West, where you just want trigger away from snapping that beautiful photo and switching back to video, bam. I must confess though, the first time that I got this camera, I didn't know how to switch from photos to video. Now I was trying to move that dial, but I didn't realize that there was another button just at the top that you have to push in and then move. But eventually I figured it out after about two minutes or five minutes or something like that. So don't forget to push the button before you move the dial. Number four, shooting modes. For me personally, I mostly shoot everything in manual, but I find that S and Q mode has been great for me in terms of time lapses. Time lapsing has never been easier. Now I don't do a lot of time lapses, and that's just because this, it's stressful to have to take all of those pictures, bring them back into post-production and start doing that, 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 that. But s &Q mode does that for me. Now I don't have to worry, which is just, uh, uh, what am I doing? What am I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, you can do s &Q mode in slow motion, by the way. The next thing about the mode on this camera is perhaps one of my favorite options now is the Super 35 on the Sony a7 IV. Now, let me tell you why I love this mode. As someone who's coming from using an APS-C crop censored camera, it means that I have APS-C lenses. Now, I don't have to sell my lenses because I can slap them on this camera, go into Super 35 and achieve the same look that I want to achieve. In this case, for me, I specifically own the Sigma 16 f1.4 when I put that on this camera, it gives me the equivalent of a 24 millimeter F 1.4. I don't think there's an F 1.4 full frame lens on the market that is affordable as that. Basically what I'm saying is that super 35 mode is a blessing in disguise. Another reason that I love the Sony a7 IV is the extra features that it gives me. For example, being able to use Monitor Pro Plus, this right here is what this app looks like. And I can basically use this to monitor myself. I can use it to control my exposure. I can use it to check my framing and do everything. I can also preview my lots straight up here. And as you can see, that's exactly what I've done. I couldn't do this on the Sony a6400. Um, I can also remotely start and stop recording on this app. Another thing as well is the red box. Now, as long as I see the red box, I'm pretty much sure that, okay, wait, let me show you the red box. Actually, I need to show you the red box. You can see the red box on there. As soon as I can, as soon as I, ooh, I can see myself here. Look at that. <laughs> but this is where we're looking at. So as soon as I can see the red box straight up on the camera, I know that it's recording. And it's just that, it's just one of those extra features that, you know, you're pretty impressed about how they work because they work exactly the way they're supposed to. So I see that tally light and it's like, oh yeah, we are in business. And perhaps my most favorite feature in terms of extra benefits on the Sony a7 IV is something that I think most people haven't spoken about. And maybe that's because a lot of people don't use it. 
the variable shutter. This thing is a life saver. I ain't telling you. I do a lot of commercial work where the lights will flicker because we're working in restaurants, we're working in offices where the bulbs just, they interpret frequency differently than the camera. I've enjoyed using this camera so far. If there's any question you have about this camera, if there's anything at all that you wanna know, please leave me a comment below and I will try to do what you want and get right to it. With that being said, the Sony a7 IV means business. And the thing is, should you buy the Sony a7 IV? Absolutely, yes. If you wanna see other tests that I've done on the Sony a7 IV, watch this video here or here. Oh, also, right, remember to subscribe, like, and all the above. I'm, um, you know, trying to get this, trying to get those numbers up. My creator shout out of the week is Trio Stories, Sal and Bart. Ah, you guys are the best. Check them out, check out their channel. What do we want? Where do we start? You are what everything, 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 yeah.